Hi, I'm Dave Bartoletti, and I'm a principal analyst with Forrester, serving our business technology, infrastructure, and operations clients. And I'm also a member of our cloud computing playbook team. I spend most of my time talking to Forrester clients about their cloud adoption plans and strategies. And as 2015 unfolds, it's definitely an exciting time to be covering cloud. Adoption of all types of cloud services, private clouds and public clouds, infrastructure services and platform services, are entering what we call the hypergrowth phase. Spending is way up and use cases are expanding. And software is really the heart of cloud computing. Every company, from auto manufacturers to insurance companies to contractors, to some degree is becoming a software company. Software is how you win, serve, and retain customers better than your competitors. That might be a better mobile banking application, a better media streaming website, or a better customer service portal. And cloud computing is the competitive tool more and more of my clients are using to build and deliver modern software faster. So what does modern software look like? Well, today's mobile and web applications are increasingly composed of multiple components that are built in one place, deployed to another, and might migrate to a third place for scalability. Developers are building these composite, multi-channel applications using a wide range of tools and cloud services, and our technology infrastructures need to be hybrid to support that. These new applications will often connect with cloud social media and search services. They will store data in new cloud databases and ERP and billing systems. They will also connect back to inventory and sales systems in the enterprise data center. And they'll collect data from mobile phones and new retail systems and, and feed that data to analytics engines running in the cloud. So companies have a development challenge. They want to retain the application lifecycle tools that work for traditional systems, monolithic applications that don't and shouldn't change that frequently, and at the same time, they want to leverage modern tools for their more composite apps built from microservices that must change much more frequently. So most companies will have two application life cycles, a more traditional one for existing run the business type of application, and a second modern one for those grow the business or reach new markets faster applications. New composable apps are driving agile development processes, continuous integration and continuous delivery, and DevOps. All of these terms are strategies to speed up application delivery, and they're focused on two primary objectives, splitting releases into smaller components and iterating changes to those components faster. From understanding requirements through the build, test, release, and run steps, modern applications also require development teams and IT operations teams to work better together. That means getting ops involved earlier in the build phase and keeping developers involved in configuration and deployment decisions. And that's the real promise of DevOps. We don't have time for developers to work alone, then throw code over the wall to ops and ask them to figure out how to run it. So what's really exciting to me is that DevOps is not just for the hyperscale public cloud platforms. Any company can take advantage of the DevOps tools and technologies that these hyperscale web platforms use. Most of them are open source. That means they're easy to try and come with an active community to support them. And if you've been paying attention for the last year, you already know about one of these technologies, Linux containers. Containers are a form of virtualization that lets developers and operations teams wrap up applications in small containers typically smaller than a full virtual machine, and deploy them on a wide range of operating system and hardware platforms, and increasingly to many leading cloud platforms. Containers offer a lot of promise. The technology itself is not new. What's new is the scale at which they're already being used by some big names in cloud computing, and the work that's being done in the open source community to help more people use them safely and manage them a lot more easily. So to look more closely at how containers can help modern software delivery, Red Hat commissioned a Forrester consulting project aimed at understanding how people are using containers today and how they plan to use them in the next couple of years. What benefits are they seeing? And what they need from the vendor community to make better use of containers. 
So now I'll share some of our early findings, and the full study will be available very soon. We reached out to almost 200 IT operations professionals, developers, and architects around the world who are already using containers or plan to use them within the next year. First off, we found that interest in containers is very high and adoption is growing quickly. And it's not just for a few special use cases. Companies told us they're using containers to support a wide range of workloads. The users we spoke to are accelerating delivery of big data applications and other cloud native apps. In fact, over 70% use containers for these applications today or plan to very soon. Solid majorities also use containers not only to support client-facing, customer engagement applications, but also to power their more traditional systems of record, like ERP and transaction systems. And as we expected, containers are helping plenty of companies get web and e-commerce applications to market faster. So why are these companies so interested in containers for so many different application workloads? Well, for a lot of reasons. The users we spoke to told us that many benefits of containers were important to them across the board, and these benefits are being achieved by both developers and operations teams. For one thing, our survey respondents told us that containers give them better isolation of applications from one another, which improves security and lets them increase server consolidation ratios safely. And as a result, it lets them increase IT operational efficiency. They also called out portability. They can move containers to different platforms at different stages of the application lifecycle without having to do major reconfiguration at every stage. That lets them accelerate the pace of overall software delivery and gives them more flexibility and choice about where they can deploy application components. In fact, we were pleasantly surprised that companies were seeing the value of containers beyond faster software delivery already. IT operations teams are also already seeing the efficiency and cost impacts on existing infrastructure. So what might have started as a cost-saving measure is now being driven by real business requirements. And that's indeed what one respondent told us directly. We heard over and over again that containers are about both speed and efficiency, about higher quality software and fewer configuration errors. They provide benefits that span both development and operations teams already. But for containers to become part of an enterprise software delivery strategy, you need more than just easy provisioning. They need to have all the enterprise-grade features we expect of any virtualization solution, or in fact, any technology at the heart of your company's most important asset, your software. What challenges have container users experienced so far? Well, first off, security. Without a set of best practices and security management tools to control who can do what or who can change which configuration settings, containers alone just don't have the advanced controls enterprise users need. Users also have concerns about inconsistent performance across their container deployments. So they need better visibility, and that means better management tools. They also told us they need to integrate containers into their existing development tools and processes. And they see a lack of advanced management tools to help with the entire container lifecycle. Rounding out the top five list of concerns was a lack of certification or digital signing for containers. So basically, what this comes down to is trust. With such a large community developing containers and sharing them with one another, you need to ask yourself, who created this container? For what purpose? Is it certified to run on my operating system version with the application I'm using? I'd like to point out that we also found that companies who were already using container management tools were much more confident overall. They were less concerned about these challenges slowing them down. Companies who paired containers with advanced management and clustering tools considered themselves further along the path to DevOps and agile software delivery. So taken together, this data tells us that companies are very eager to adopt containers and to adopt them for a wide range of applications. But they don't want container use to become the Wild West. So as you consider using containers for either existing or new applications, we have some recommendations for you. First, talk to your trusted vendors 
and vendors that are adding containers to existing platforms, and ask them how they can help you use containers safely. Look for vendors who are thinking about security today. You want to establish a circle of trust for what you run inside containers, so you can be confident you know where a container originated, why it was built, who built it, and what you can safely use it for. And don't wait until you've already got a bunch of development teams clamoring to use containers before you think about how you'll manage them, how you'll deploy them at scale, how you'll schedule deployments. There are management and orchestration solutions for containers out there today. You don't have to reinvent them yourself. Again, talk to your trusted vendors. And finally, we think containers are worth the hype. The core technology is sound, and the vendor community is quickly adding management and security features to help you use it safely. Containers should be on your radar. They can be a key element in your path to DevOps and can help you deliver software faster and drive up efficiency at the same time. Thank you.